friends and family and partners, welcome to the home group tonight, or today, whatever time you're watching. My name is Paul, and I am so happy that I get to be with you today. Today, I'm here with my brother, Joel. Hi, Paul. Hi, Joel. I enjoy being with you. Thank you. I enjoy being with you, too. Thank you. Yeah. Mom and Dad are traveling right now, and they asked us to fill in for them. And I think it's going to be fun. It will be fun, and it's a great privilege that Mom and Dad get to, that we get to fill in for Mom and Dad. Uh, and uh, before we start, how about we pray together? Lord, I thank you that we can be together here as me and Joel are in the studio and everyone else is sitting at their homes and at their computers. Lord, we pray for mom and dad as they travel, ask you to give them strength and encouragement. And Lord, I thank you that there's a miracle that happens every time we come together at the home group. And I thank you, Lord, that we can open our Bibles and we can look at the Word of God, we can discuss it, and we can find more of your truth to apply in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Paul, I know we're going to talk about fasting, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And uh, <clears throat> I wanted to read a testimony before we get started. Sure. Though. I kind of like this testimony. It's from a lady. Her name's Tamara in, in, in Russia. It doesn't say where, but I assume she's in Russia. She says, Pastor Rick, I've been reading your your publications and listening to your messages for a long time. I had a really hard time in my life <clears throat> and I spent almost a year in the hospital. Wow. That sounds horrible. It's a long time. And she says, while I was in the hospital those days, laying in my cot, I would listen to, we, she said we would listen to, so the whole room would listen to these home groups. And I think that's great. Yeah. She would be listening to the Russian home group. And she just says, thank you for your family, thank you for what you're doing in it, Tamara. And I just think that's precious. Yeah. She would turn on home group, and it doesn't matter if they want to listen or not, the whole room's going to listen. I just think that's sweet. Yeah. yeah. It's a it, good thing to do when you're in the hospital. Yeah. It's great. Uh, Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Very, very popular verse. Uh, in fact, in 2014, it was considered the most popular or the most quoted verse uh, in all churches for the whole year. So, uh, Romans 12, verses. 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice. And as we talk about fasting, presenting your bodies as a living sacrifice has a special meaning. Holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let's say it together. Be ye, ye transformed, transformed by the renewing, renewing of, of your, your mind. mind. Let's say it together because um, you probably didn't catch it. Be ye, ye transformed, transformed by, by the, the renewing, renewing of, of your, your mind. mind. So we see that once we come to Christ, there's a transformation process. But it and, says later that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Yes. I would like to uh, be prove. the proof of God's perfect will. Yes, that's, that's wonderful. But it says con transform your mind, mm -hmm. which I think is very important. Yeah. Reading the Word of God, praying in tongues, fasting like you're about to talk about. I think that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, when we're saved, immediately, the moment we're saved, our spirit man, our inner man, our spirit is beautiful, perfect made by God. And then we see that there's a transforming of your mind. So our spirit, hopefully, and over time, begins to affect the way we think, and it begins to affect our mind. And that's what we call a transformation process as you become more and more like Christ every day in your Christian life. You're saved, your spirit is perfect, but it takes a little while for your thinking to change, and it takes a little while for your actions to eventually change. But then there's our body. And our body, it still has our flesh, as Paul calls it, still has this has sin. The sin nature is in our flesh. So our sin nature and our temptations to sin are not in our mind and they're not in our spirit. Our mind is being transformed, but our body retains the temptation to sin. And so that's something we've, oh, we've always got to work on. And as we fast, we learn to say no to our body and say yes to the Spirit in us. And we're going to get to that in a minute, but that's just one of the places where I'd like to stop. As we fast, we learn to say no to our body 
because it looks like most of us, I mean, when I look in the mirror, I don't see my spirit. I see my body. And when I comb my hair, I'm not combing my spirit. I'm combing my, my body, right? Combing my hair. And when I'm eating food, uh, I'm not feeding my spirit. When I'm eating food, I'm feeding my body. And so for most of us, the majority of our time is spent on taking care of our bodies, feeding us, putting on clothes, doing something to take care of your body. Uh, but we need to spend more time taking care of our spirit. And the most powerful tool that we have, and I am absolutely convinced of this, and the only way that we can change, but the most powerful tool to change in our life is the Word of God. And the more we learn, and the more we read, and the more we meditate on the Word of God, the more change happens in our lives. And so that's where the battle happens, in between uh, everything that goes on in our mind, the transformation of well, our mind. When you read the Bible, you are renewing your mind. Oh, yes. When you read the Bible once, a second time, a third time, your brain will start changing. Mm -hmm. and At some point, you'll get what the Ten Commandments are about. <laughs> so <laughs> you're, you're renewing your mind. And you're feeding your spirit. Yes, and yes. We spend so much time feeding our bodies. Uh, reading your Bible is feeding your spirit. And you are your spirit. You are not your body. You are your spirit. A simple way to test that is your body is not what's going to heaven. Your spirit is what's going to live eternally. Your body will stay here on the earth until the earth is gone and the Lord gives you a new body. A new body. But you are not your body. Your body is not you. You are your spirit. So spend more time feeding your spirit. Matthew, in Matthew chapter 9, verses 14 and 15, we see uh, how the, John the Baptist, John's disciples, come to Jesus to ask him a, an interesting question. Uh, Matthew chapter 9, verses 14 through 15. And they came to him, the disciples of John, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast oft, or fast often? I'm reading the King James Version. And your disciples, thy disciples, fast not. And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then they shall fast. So we are now in these days when the bridegroom, or Jesus, has been taken away from us. He was crucified and resurrected. He is now sitting at the right hand of the Father. And we are his children, or we are uh, now mourning, as it says here. Can the children of the bride chamber mourn? as long as the bridegroom is with him, but the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then they shall fast. So now is the time to fast. And something that's also interesting that we see here is that fasting is something that we will do only here and only now. Once we get our new body that has no sin in it, fasting will be no longer. Fasting is something, or fasting is a spiritual discipline that you can only do while you're on the earth. So take advantage of the time. And if it's a spiritual discipline that we can do only while we're here, it's probably something we should be doing. Now, I know that there are a lot of Christians who have never fasted. A lot of pe believers who have been believers for the longest time, and they've never fasted. It's something that hasn't been spoken about a lot. Maybe it's something that's kind of forgotten right now, but I believe the Lord is really reminding a lot of people about the importance of fasting right now. Uh, thank you, Jensen Franklin, for your excellent book about books about fasting and encouraging the church to fast. If you haven't read Jensen Franklin's books about fasting, I would highly recommend that. But Jesus said that it is now time to fast and that uh, he expects us to do it. It's obvious here from uh, this passage that Jesus expects us to do it. But Paul, we have colossal power in our spirits. Mark 11, <clears throat> verses 22 through 20, 26 says, but I won't read the whole thing. It says, And Jesus answered, saying unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be, th be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, 
but shall, ha but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he saith. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to, you, don't doubt your heart. Don't doubt what you're speaking. Don't doubt your faith. Yes. It says have faith in God. Have faith in God. And I think that when, if we spend time on our spirit, we have a lot more power than, than we have at the moment. Mm -hmm. Well, in that passage it says that if we don't doubt, right? Well, in order to be sure of something, sure of something that the Lord has given us, we need to be able to tell the difference between who we're listening to, which voices are we to pay attention to? Because we have our own voice, and then we have the voice of our flesh, and we have the voice of our mind, and there's a spirit talking to us, and then we have our friend, and our neighbor, and our wife, and our son, and our father, and our mother, and our grandmother, and our co-workers. We've got all these voices in our life, uh, but in order to focus on what the Lord wants you to do and not doubt and use the power of prayer like that verse is talking about, we have to be pretty sure and have the confidence that we need to be able to pray like that. And part of that confidence or fasting is another spiritual discipline that the Lord has given us that helps us know what we should have confidence in so we know which voices to listen to. Mm -hmm. Matthew 6, uh, verses 16 through 18. Uh, interesting, both passages today that we're opening are in Matthew. Matthew 6, verses 16 and 18. Uh, it's the Sermon on the Mount, and Jesus begins to talk a little bit about fasting and how you should fast. In fact, on the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus talks a lot about prayer, and he talks a lot about the things that we should do in private. He says, go to your closet and pray privately. He talks about how we should do things as unto the Lord and do them in private or in secrecy sometimes. Moreover, when they fast, Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 and 18 through 18, moreover, when you fast, be not ye hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men as to fast. Verily I say to you, they have their reward. It's not a good one. That, well, if you do things as unto men, you get your reward from men. I know, but you don't really get anything. Yeah, it's, I think... So if, you, if, you're, if you, he's saying, if you're fasting and you're walking around sad and you, know, you have a t-shirt on saying that says, I fast, yeah. I'm, fa I'm in fasting. I'm, I'm fasting. But I don't think anybody does that. But anyway, he says, if you do that, you've already got your reward. People are already, I guess, sorry for you. Yeah. So he says, don't do that. But when thou fast, anoint thy head and wash thy face. So, you know, make sure your hair looks good. Make sure you smell good. You know, dress normally. Don't run around telling everyone that you're fasting. Uh, thou shalt appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. So there are some things about, especially about fasting, that we do only as unto the Lord. And when the Lord calls you into a fast, you're definitely doing it only because he told you to do it. I think it's great whenever we get some encouragement from our brothers in the Lord, or perhaps even from your pastor, that there's a yearly fast or it's time to fast or you're fasting for a certain purpose and you're fasting as a community. In that case, you are doing that as a community as unto the Lord. You're doing that as a group of people unto the Lord and that is your collective prayer. But what I'm talking today is your personal fast. Do you fast just because the Lord called you to fast? Or do you fast just to become a little more sensitive to the Holy Spirit? just to be able to know the difference between what voices you should be actually paying attention to. Have you fasted just to tell the Lord that he is more important to you than food? When you fast, all of a sudden, you get all these things that, that seem to be more important. You realize that food takes up a lot of time. You spend a lot of time cooking. You spend a lot of time eating. You spend a lot of time shopping for food. And... All of a sudden, you're like, wow, I don't spend that much time reading my Bible. But if you don't fast, then you don't really see the difference. 
Or when you begin to fast, all of a sudden you realize that once you're not eating, there are so many other things that try to distract you from praying or try to distract you from reading your Bible. They try to fill that void that has appeared in your life. Because when you're not eating, there's a void. There's a void of, uh, there's a void in your time. There's a void for your body looking for something to do. There's a void for your mind to fill while you are not eating. So television or social media or any other thing, or any other relationship can begin to fill that void that is meant to be filled with prayer and uh, with, you know, time with the Lord. I like what it says in <clears throat> Matthew 4, verse 4. And he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but only by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Mm-hmm. I think that's so powerful. Yeah. So powerful. Every, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, it kind of makes you want God to speak to you. <laughs> that's right. That's a good point, Joel. It, it really, you, if, if you can't live off bread, you can only live off the word of God. If, if God did not create rain, we wouldn't have food to eat anyway. Mm -hmm. So it all comes from him. And I think when we fast, we, we recognize that. We're mm -hmm. really giving thanks. Yeah. Well, oh, you're doing a lot. But when you're giving thanks to God for giving you, you know, food to eat, mm -hmm. relationships to have. Mm -hmm. And in a lengthy fast, I've heard many testimonies of how people have actually said that the Word of God became like physical food for them. Actually reading the Word of God fulfills a physical need. Of course, we read the Word of God most of the time to fulfill a spiritual need in our life. But when you're fasting, this, that you will live not by bread alone, this actually becomes, this scripture, this principle gains a whole new light. Well, the Bible, like I read about the mountain, you know, don't doubt in your heart <clears throat> and you can move a mountain into the sea. That's what I just read. Mm -hmm. And if you go back to verse 4 of Matthew, <clears throat> the verse before chapter, uh, verse 4 says, and when the tempter sh came to him, he said, If thou <clears throat> be the Son of God, command these stones to be made to bread. Well, if Jesus didn't doubt in his heart, he could create those stones to be bread. Oh, yeah. Easily. Easily. And then, and then he keeps on going about saying that bread alone and every mm -hmm. word of God. <clears throat> but, you know, don't doubt in your heart, don't doubt in your spirit. It's, yeah. it's, it's interesting messages. Yeah. Uh, when we fast, it's almost like you read in Ecclesiastes 10.10, where it talks about uh, how if an axe is dull, it's going to take more effort or it's going to require more strength to get the same amount of work done. And sometimes as Christians, you may look back on your past and say, wow, I used to be so hungry for the things of the Lord. And these worldly things used to, I used to hate these worldly things so much. And now I don't have that hunger that I used to have for the Lord, for the Lord. And, and now it, I seem to be comfortable with things that I used to not be comfortable with. And sometimes we don't know how that happens. As Christians, it, it seems like we move slowly, slowly. I mean, sometimes it takes months, sometimes it takes years, but it seems like we move away or our, the sharpness of our spiritual sensitivity dulls. And when we fast, we're regaining that spiritual sensitivity, that hunger. And we, when you're done with your fast, it's for a while there, it's, it's almost like you're still fasting. You're just as sensitive. You're just as strong. You're just as hungry for the spiritual things and even more. And and sometimes we just need to find time in our, in our year or find time, you know, I, I have a couple fasts a year, but find time to fast to sharpen your spiritual sensitivities and be closer to the Lord in that sense. Ecclesiastes 10.10 10 says, <clears throat> If the iron is blunt and one does not sharpen the edge, he must use more strength. Well, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But wisdom helps one succeed. So it basically says, take a break and go sharpen the axe. Yeah. And I was I, when when you were talking about that, I remembered one day I was <coughs> at the house and my wife Ola she asked me to go, you know, cut down some trees, and so I got out the axe and I just started going. And she said it was going to take a couple hours, but it turned out to take six hours. It was ridiculous, and I didn't even finish the same day. 
after that experience, I learned I need to buy a chainsaw. But <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> so I'm using this axe, and after two hours, three hours, it just gets harder and harder. But I'm not, I just think, you know, I'll finish in an hour. I'll just finish. Yeah. And I'm not really understanding the axe is getting dull. Dull. And so here comes the neighbor, and he comes over, and he's looking at what I'm doing, shaking his hand like, this guy does not know what he's doing with this axe. And so he says, go get my axe. And when I got his axe, it was so sharp. You know, I could hear the metal just ding as I was cutting the wood and all that business. And I felt the difference. Mm -hmm. I felt the difference. And I think sometimes it's good to take a break when you can't hear the Word of God, when you can't feel Him as well as you used to. Mm -hmm. Take a break. Go sharpen your axe. Go, go, go connect with the Word of God. Pray. Take a break. Fast. That's sharpening your spiritual axe. Yeah. It's doing something. And the Bible says that's uh -huh. wisdom. It says that's wisdom to take a break and go sharpen your axe. Mm -hmm. But wisdom profiteth. It, it talks about how you have to use wisdom in order to take that pause and sharpen your axe. Because it may look like you're doing nothing. And a pause, a uh, fast, in some sense, is putting your life on pause. You can't do the things that you can u normally do when you're fasting. Uh, you have to limit yourself to certain, act you have to limit certain activities while you're fasting because you may just run out of strength. Uh, and you may feel like, you know, everybody's getting all this stuff done and, you know, I'm, I feel like I need to take a nap, you know, or, or just it's not working out for you as the same it is for everybody around you. Well, you know, a fast is kind of putting life on pause. But when you do that, you're not just doing it for no reason. You're doing it to get back to the things of the Lord, to pay attention to your spiritual life, and to feed your inner person. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about taking a pause. It's not a pause. It's like sitting down to sharpen your axe. It may think like somebody else is still chopping their trees. Why can't I just, you know, keep at it? Well, if you do, it's just going to cause, you're just going to have to use more strength to get the same thing done. But when you take a pause... To search for God, that is activity. Oh, it's great activity. If you're sitting there not chopping down wood, but sharpening your axe, that is activity. That is progress. Mm -hmm. It's just a different kind. Yeah. And I think it's good to take a break and search for God's face. Yeah. We should do that every day. But sometimes it's specially needed. Special time. Yeah. Well, there are some obvious benefits from fasting or obvious reasons to fast for every one of us. And for me, one of the most obvious reasons to fast is because I'm a husband and a father. It's pretty simple. I have a God-given responsibility. I am supposed to lead my family. And in order for me, me to lead my family, I need to have a clear, better understanding of what God's will is for me and for my family, for my children. And so my personal responsibility before God and before my family is to know his will and to take care of my family. And fasting is great for that. And there is enough out there that wants to destroy your family. The enemy wants to de destroy your family. There is enough out there that wants to distract your kids from doing something for the Lord. And when you take time to fast, you're taking time actually to protect your family. You're taking time to find the will of God for your family. And you may be working through some amazing things during your fast that you don't even know about or protecting your family from things that you don't even know about just because you took time to fast and pray. Another obvious benefit of well, fasting. I want to add something. I don't remember how many years ago. I think it was 2011. I can't remember for sure. But we were thinking about going on vacation. Mm-hmm. And and we were thinking about going. I think it was I think it was um, Sh Sri Lanka or Thailand. It was during the great tsunami. Yeah, the tsunami that hit that whole area. And you know that's not far from Moscow, but we were thinking about going there. It's kind of different for us. We never go to the beach anyway, <coughs> but it was kind of interesting to, for us to go to a different place than some other city with a lot of rocks in it, but in a lot of historical museums, rocks. Historical rocks. Yeah, but Dad felt in his heart that you know we shouldn't go. And you're talking about fasting and, and leading your family, and yeah. no one else felt it. We were all excited about going to the beach. It was kind of kind of a cool idea, yeah. since we'd never done it before. And Dad said, no, I don't think we should go. And this is after he said, let's go. And if he had not felt that in his heart, we would have been there during that tsunami. 
that killed thousands and thousands of people. Yeah. And I'm just grateful to Dad and that he listened to his heart and, and he did what his heart told him to do, even though we were all excited about going. Yeah. I mean, he said, sorry, guys, we're not going. Yeah. It wasn't the popular decision that day. No, but, but he knew what he was doing. Yeah. Anyway. Well, another obvious benefit of fasting is fasting helps to keep your emotions under control. When you're fasting, you can tell the difference between your flesh and your spirit. All of a sudden, things become crystal clear. Where, what is the you that you don't want speaking, your flesh? And what is the you inside of you, the Holy Spirit in you, that actually wants to speak? And fasting helps you keep your emotions in check. Uh, keep your fears in check, keep your, keep all of those emotions in check. And sometimes it's just hard to know which emotions are right, which emotions are wrong, which ones come from the Lord, which ones are just a collection of past experiences and fears. Fasting helps for us, helps us to tell the difference between which ones are from Lord and which ones are not. Fasting also helps us get away from all the noise. There's so much noise in our world today. And when you fast, when you put life on pause, when you separate yourself from everything going on around you and you begin to pay attention to what's on the inside and you begin to feed your spirit, all of a sudden you begin to hear some things inside of you that you've never heard before. Or maybe you hear a quietness that you have never heard before. You may have a peace that you have never experienced before. And that gives, you, that gives you something to look for. It gives you something to know that, that this is the way things are supposed to be. And this noise and these distractions and everything going on over here, this is, this is not good. But that internal peace or that quietness or the voice of the Holy Spirit that you begin to hear whenever you can tell the difference between everything else and the Holy Spirit, that's, that is an obvious great benefit when you separate yourself and you from all of the noise. Paul, I wanted to add that sometimes quietness can be disturbing. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> once I went hunting with my Uncle Jimmy. That, that was a great time. I enjoyed hunting with Uncle Jimmy. But when we got out there, you know, it was late at night or early in the morning, it was so quiet. Mm -hmm. And he told me to sit still and be quiet. It was so quiet, I felt, you know, un uncomfortable. Because I'm used to just being around people, being being hearing noise, listening to music, and you know, being in the family and all that business. And so he told me to sit there quiet, and I'm there just jumping, jump, you know, looking out the wind, looking out the little tent, because it was just uncomfortable. But after the first hour, the second hour, I kind of got used to it, and it became very enjoyable. And I'm saying that to say that quietness can be uncomfortable if you're not used to it. Oh yeah. And it's good to get used to sit still yeah. and, and just wait. Yeah. That's a good thing to do. Yeah. yeah. Another obvious benefit of fasting is it reminds you of the important things. It seems that there are so many things that are competing for our attention. They're competing in our lives to be the most important. And food, of course, is one of those things. It's competing uh, for everything to be the most important. And then once you remove that and... All of a sudden you realize, wait a minute, now something else wants to fill that void, fill that time, fill, fill that place, and it now wants to be the most important. And then once you take care of that, all of a sudden you realize you got something else in your life that wants to be the most important. And, and these are things that are pulling on us all day long, especially as you fast, but in our everyday lives. These things are pulling on us. They want to be the most important things in our lives. But when you fast, you're actually making a choice. Instead of just, you know, the situation deciding for you what is the most important or you having to decide on the fly how to prioritize your time, when you fast, you're making a choice. You're the one in control when you fast and you're telling everyone this is the most important. And then everything else in your life and all of those other desires and distractions, it's like you're telling them where their place really is. You're putting them in their place, putting priorities back where they should be. So I, I highly recommend it. It helps you remind you what is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And obviously, 
fasting brings us closer to the Lord. It, it does in, a, in an amazing way. As we fast, we begin to see things in our lives that we need to ask repentance for. We begin to separate ourselves from the things that are distracting us, and we, we make the conscious choice to be closer to the Lord. Fast brings you closer. Fasting brings you closer to the Lord. Paul, I have a question. Yes. When is not a good time to fast? I think it's always a good time to fast. Okay. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. So let's say it's uh, Christmas. Uh-huh. Or Thanksgiving. Or Thanksgiving. Or some other big holiday, family holiday. Is that a good day to fast? Probably not the best day to fast. But let me tell or you Or let's something. say your son's wedding. Is that a good day to fast? Probably not a good day to fast. No. Because but... Jesus did said, and you read it. Yeah. He said, you know, as long as I'm with you, you know, you should be fasting. But I'm leaving soon. That's what he said. Yeah. And then you can start fasting. So I want to ask again. When, when is not a good time to fast? Let me answer you differently. Okay. If you've never fasted before, or if you don't fast very often, you don't have a lot of experience with it, first of all, I have, I have a couple recommendations. First, start small. All right? Skip lunch. But don't just skip lunch because you're busy. We all do that. Skip lunch and spend time praying or reading your Bible, doing something or doing a spiritual practice that you would have not done otherwise. Spend time in quiet. That's big, right? So start small. Uh, if you've got something on your mind and you really don't know how to, what should happen and you don't know where, which voice is the Lord's and which is your own and which is distractions, take a two, three-day fast so that, and ask the Lord. Say, Lord, help me tell the difference between your voice and all of these other voices I'm hearing. Start small with your fasts and remember that they're all different type, there are different types of fasting and as you fast, fasting is generally not eating or uh, you know, the abstain, an abstain from food in order to spend that time praying or spending time, uh, spending time with the Lord. But just make sure that whenever you fast, you're not c compensating that time that you would be eating with something else that would be just a distraction. So start small. Second, when you fast, Plan your time. Plan to do something while you usually eat. Because otherwise you'll just be sitting there watching your kids eat thinking that this is hard. <laughs> this is really hard. That smells good. Now finish your food. Finish all of it. Because <laughs> if something's left on the plate, you're going to think that's tempting, right? So plan to do something while you are uh, fasting. And number three, for number one is start small. Number two, plan your time. Number three, consider how your fast will affect others. And maybe this is, Joel, something that you were getting on. Because fasting is, um, doesn't give you the right to be rude. It doesn't give you the right to walk around with a bad attitude and everybody's just supposed to be understanding. Uh, no, actually, if you have a bad attitude while you're fasting, that's something the Lord is pointing out and you need to repent of and change and keep fasting until you get over that. Or, you know, now, of course, some people may have some legitimate reasons, health reasons why they should not fast and you need to be sensitive of that. But, uh, of course, there are events and other things that perhaps that even if you're fasting... And I've had this happen to me, and I've heard other people share similar things, that even during a fast, uh, they have been invited to important family events where they felt it would be rude and incorrect for them to not eat. And in such situations, I've even heard people say, you know what, I felt the Lord tell me that it would be okay if I, you know, didn't, if I pop, put my fast on a pop, pop, blah, 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 put my fast on a pause in order to support my family today. You know, that's okay. But then continue your fast. And, you know, and don't take advantage of being off your fast to eat as much as you can. That won't be healthy. That wouldn't be good for you and that would defeat the purpose. You're, if you're eating with someone at a family event, even, even while you're fasting, the purpose is to, is to help that person or be a part of the fellowship and if you were to, you know, be a, outside of that event or not eat, it, 
be sensitive. We're not talking about being fanatics and you know being this or that only, but be sensitive and follow the Holy Spirit. Consider how your fast affects the people around you because you still have kids you have to feed and you still have people that you have to spend time with and you need to find a way to fast and be considerate of those around you because you're the only one fasting. And it's a lonely thing to fast. So, you know, number one, start small. Number two, plan your time. Number three, consider how it will affect the people around you. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. And don't forget that fasting requires faith, and without faith you can't please God. And if you feel like you haven't done anything that requires faith in a while, maybe testing the Lord and whether you can survive without food for three days would be something that requires faith of you. And that would be a way for you to tell the Lord that he is more important than you to you than eating. Uh, or that spending time in the Word of God is more important to you than spending time eating. Uh, think about that. And, you know, the, the Lord led us today to talk about fasting. So I think there's a reason for that. Perhaps the Lord is telling you today, time to fast. Time to start prayer and fast. So just a reminder. Well, Paul, thank you for doing this. Thank you for teaching in the home group. And thank you, home group, for being with us. I like being with you guys. You guys are a bunch of fun. That's right. <clears throat> thank you for everything you write in the chats. And I want to pray for you all. Pray for you, Paul. Father God, I thank you for this wonderful day. I thank you for this, the rest of our evening. I ask you to give us good sleep. I ask you to teach us what your word says and renew our minds. Renew our minds, Jesus. We're trying, but teach us to renew our minds. I ask you to bless the rest of the week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.